It's back to court for Cape Town's former mayor, Patricia DeLille. She got her marching orders from the DA today when they rescinded her membership. But she wants to challenge the party's decision. She joins us now. Well, with uh, the DA having rescinded um, your membership of the party, what do I call you this evening? Mayor? Or do I call you Africa, assuming uh, some of the reports are right, that you may well go back to the PAC? Or should I call you fighter, which some people have said is probably where you're going next? Or simply comrade or chief, if some reports are to be believed? Who do I call you, Patricia Dillon? <laughs> Patricia Dillon, it's fine, Buyo. <laughs> I like, I like your summary. You're part of the speculation. <laughs> well, but uh, um, uh, uh, seriously now, as far as you are concerned, is Alderman Patricia DeLille still the mayor of the city of Cape Town? First of all, Vuyo, I, I am contesting uh, the decision taken by uh, the federal executive. I've listened earlier on to the clip of uh, Mr. James Self. Uh, he's certainly entitled to his interpretation of that uh, clause, uh, the automatic cessation. Um, I'm entitled to my interpretation of the automatic cessation. And then if you have two different interpretations, that's when you turn to the courts to help you to decide and rule on which interpretation is right or wrong. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with going to court and, and testing it. So I have served papers today on the Independent Electoral Commission, uh, the city of Cape Town, the city manager, and of course the party. And, and since I have given notice now and they know that I'm contesting uh, um, uh, the outcome of my determination of my membership, uh, we all have to wait until Friday to see what the court will make a ruling on. So I put my faith in the independence of the judiciary. So what happens tomorrow morning? Where do you go to? You wake up and what? Tomorrow morning, uh, yes, I have got a long-standing breakfast appointment that I'm going to speak at tomorrow morning. I have to find some time in my diary to go to the police station to lay charges against uh, some DA members of parliament that have um, fraudulently used a, an AG report claiming that I interfered with tenders. Um, and so I have to find time to do that. And then, of course, I had a meeting today with the city manager. Um, and you know what? Um, there are hundreds and thousands of people out there that are supporting me and sending messages of support. I will be responding to some of them. So I have got a full day tomorrow, Vuyo, because now that I have contested the, the outcome of the, the federal, federal executive decision, uh, uh, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's uh, not binding on me now until the court can, can make a ruling. So and that's the legal advice that I got, by the way, from my lawyers. So you will be going about doing your things as you would as the mayor of the city of Cape Town? Yes, I will be doing that as a public representative, not necessarily as the mayor always, because I am a public representative. And as I was saying, you know, I've got this long outstanding appointments that I will be attending to tomorrow. And then, of course, everything is subject to uh, the court uh, outcome on Friday. What was your meeting with the city manager about? My meeting with the, the city manager uh, today was about exactly how do we manage this uh, period, um, how do we interpret uh, the, uh, um, the standard.
be lawyers talking to one another. So uh, Dirk, Dirk Smith, the, the, the speaker, was already written to you saying you must please vacate your office as soon as possible and please don't forget uh, to return the city's property that may be in your, in your possession. You are not returning any of that and you're not vacating um, your office until the court has spoken. I've also spoken to the speaker today and I told the speaker that until Thursday I will still be around the city, that I've got some outstanding things to do. Um, he has agreed with me uh, that, uh, you know, even the, the support services that, um, that's driving me around will still be doing that. And so I had a conversation with the speaker. And like I say, everything is linked to what the courts will decide on on Friday. Now, with the benefit of hindsight, do you regret um, making the statement uh, that the DA is now using um, against you, even if it's in so far as you have made it easy for them to do what they did this morning? Well, it's certainly the party are entitled to uh, interpret the way they want to, uh, to take the action necessary that they want to. Um, I'm also entitled to, to my interpretation. That's why we, we are going to court. And, and like I said before, that the context with which I had the conversation with Eusebius, and it's always being about the mayoral position, you know, uh, that is where we, the party wants me out to be uh, the mayor. And, and you, Eusebius asked me whether I am prepared to resign, and after all of this, after I have cleared my name, and I said, yes, I will walk away. And so that is where the interpretation is. We never had an issue of uh, termination of membership because just about two weeks ago, the party made an offer again to me to become a member of parliament. So we've never spoken about termination of membership. But it's because over the past eight months, we started off with a disciplinary hearing. The party has postponed that indefinitely. Uh, they've not been able to give me the necessary evidence and the witness to proceed with the disciplinary hearing, so that was parked. Uh, then uh, the recall clause was applied to me last week, and the caucus voted in a motion of no confidence. The federal executive had to decide on Saturday about that recall clause. That has also now been parked. And so this new issue of termination of membership is just another shortcut of get, bypassing the existing procedures that is, that is in progress uh, to try and get rid of me. But I will leave my faith uh, in the hands of the court and I will abide by the outcome of the decision of the court on Friday. So when you said you would be prepared to walk away after uh, clearing your name, you were referring to walking away from the position of mayor of the city of Cape Town. And you're going to submit, I would imagine, that that would have been the common understanding, considering that not too long ago, as you have just said, you were even offered uh, to be a position of MP. Yes, definitely. But again, you know, as I was saying, it's a matter of interpretation, Vuyo. And, and if you have difference of interpretation, like it is definitely is in this case, the best is like what I've done today is to turn to the courts and ask the courts to make a ruling on the two different interpretations. Now, you have, uh, you said earlier that uh, going to court is about equality um, before the law, and you've been saying consistently that uh, all you want to do yes. or what you want to do more than anything else is to actually clear your name. But the political animal that you are, yeah. you know that you are not wanted anymore. So why don't you just walk away now? Voyo, even as politicians, we've got the rights. We've got political rights in the Constitution. It doesn't mean that because I'm a politician that the rights in the Constitution does not apply to me. The Constitution speaks about natural justice. The Constitution speaks about the rule of law, that we are all equal before the law. Those are very important rights in our Constitution. And the illustration that I'm making now is to show that 
those rights are actually meaningless unless you claim them and make sure that you say, I'm entitled to these rights. And that must also be respected in the broader uh, democracy that we are building. We're building a culture of rights, a culture of respect for one another, a culture whereby you have got the right to answer to any allegation, that you can't have a situation where allegations are just dumped on you and you, you're not afforded an opportunity to test those allegations. Those days are over. If people still think that we are living in the apartheid years where they used to put you in jail for 60 days without trial, detention without trial, those days are over. We are now living in a human rights culture and I am entitled to those rights. I'm entitled to natural justice and that is what I'm fighting for. Give me an opportunity to test all of these allegations in a due process. I have been denied that opportunity. That's why, Vuyo, I had to turn to the courts where I will finally find some justice. But isn't that even more reason why uh, you should just walk away from these people? I mean, you're talking about rights. You're talking about the Constitution. One would have no, thought... No, one would have thought. One would have thought that, you know, these avowed Democrats, these died in the wool uh, liberals would actually understand that perhaps more than anybody else. I can't walk away, Vuyo. Then South Africans will say that, that you know, she's walking away, she's resigned, and therefore she's guilty. Um, you know, I worked long and hard. I've been in politics for more than 40 years. I built up a reputation as a person that has fought against corruption all my life. To be accused now of maladministration, of corruption, without people bringing any evidence. I have said so publicly, and I am writing to Natasha too, that if she has got any evidence of corruption, she must please bring it and then it can be tested because she is just taking over the same script like other spokespersons before her and just repeating the same lies except to say that I have asked that these allegations be tested and now that is being it's not afforded. I think this latest attempt is really a concession that there is nothing against Patricia DeLille because we 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 cannot find the guilty in a disciplinary procedure. We cannot find the guilty in a recall call clause. And therefore, there is now this issue, the new issue of termination of membership, which is just a shortcut out of this whole process. I cannot just walk away, Vuyo. I have got a reputation to protect. Well, there are people who said, well, you may be right that in the 40 years that you're talking about, you did indeed build a reputation. In fact, in one of the graphics that my colleague Michael Marilia um, was, uh, was uh, doing earlier, that uh, was uh, actually put out there. But there are people that would believe that actually you messed with that reputation the day you decided to take a PAC seat, go and form a new political party, only to throw that party away at the altar, <laughs> sacrifice that uh, uh, party at the altar of the DA because you were there to secure a senior position. <laughs> and now the, the chickens are coming home to well, roost, so to speak. <laughs> No, no, you know opinions, people are entitled to their opinions. We all have opinions about all kinds of things. But what is wrong is when you take your opinion to judge. Because I will never use my opinion just to judge somebody without getting that person an opportunity. So people who are making all of those comments are entitled to it, but please don't judge me because I have not judged you. And I have lived my life and I have contributed to this country in a manner that I felt was opportune at the moment, at that particular moment. And I came together with Helen Ziller in 2010, where we both agree that we need to come together to build an alternative to the ruling party. And that project is still as relevant as today to bring the fragmented opposition together. So really, I, I, I really don't care also what other people's opinions are about me. Uh, you know, I, I, I live my life the way I feel it fit. And I, I do respect other people's also to live their lives the way they see fit.